What is a datum? A datum is a location that we measure from on an airplane. The datum is an imaginary vertical plane from which all horizontal measurements are taken for balance purposes. So let me go a little deeper into that. Here I have a little airplane. If I want to put baggage in the baggage compartment, I need to know how much and where that baggage compartment is located because it's going to affect the balance of the airplane. So the datum is merely a point from which I will measure. Here we have a low wing airplane. The datum on the low wing airplane is measured the same as any datum is. We have to pick a start point. In situation one, we're going to pick a start point, which is at the leading edge of the spinner. So I take the tape measure, I put it at the leading edge of the spinner, and I measure back towards the tail. I can take a location such as the baggage compartment and merely look at where the center of this compartment is and look at my tape measure and that's the number. I'll also need a number or something like the center of the main wheel or where the pilot sits. So all I have to do is look, my, look at my tape measure and that is my location. But remember the datum is the zero line. That's the end of the, that's the end of the tape measure. That's where this all starts. The second scenario for my low wing airplane is to have the datum located. Let's in this case use the front of the wing. We'll take one tape measure, we'll locate it at the front of the wing and we'll run it back towards the tail. My datum location will be the leading edge of the wing, that will be the zero. Now what about the engine and the propeller and everything that's forward of the wing? Well, we'll take a second tape measure and run that tape measure the other direction. So going to the right using the first tape measure, all those numbers will be considered positive numbers. Going to the left will make those numbers negative. We'll use these negative and positive numbers, it'll be very important, believe me, in our weight and balance calculations. Our last scenario for this low wing airplane is to have the datum be way out in front of the nose. I can take this tape measure, I can put it way in front of the airplane, and the tip of the propeller, the, the spinner, will be at some number, maybe 20 or 30, it will be at a number, and each location will have a number, but the zero line will be out in front of the airplane. What I want to talk about here is that high wing versus low wing, for establishment of the datum, that part won't really change. It's really going to be the exact same exercise. The only thing we have to remember here is that the airplane must be level, and datum, location, measurements, and weighing is done with the airplane in level flight. What is an arm? If I want to talk about what an arm is, an arm is a lever. So if you think of a lever being something that has a length to it, has leverage, an arm is the length of the lever. It's a horizontal distance that a part of the aircraft or piece of equipment is located at from the datum. So remember this tape measure and we measured how far back the baggage compartment was, that is the arm. That distance is the arm. Now arms can be displayed as either a positive number or a negative number. So in some situations we put the zero line or the datum at the leading edge of the wing and we measured towards the tail, that being a positive distance. And then we measured with a second tape measure going towards the propeller. That was a negative. So an arm is a horizontal distance. It can be displayed as either a positive number or a negative number. But let's not get too confused about it. Remember, we're just using a tape measure. And if you've got two tape measures, one's got to be positive and one's got to be negative. That is an arm. One last thing. So if we've got the datum located at the front or beyond the front of the airplane, all our numbers are going to be positive. If we have a datum that is located at the leading edge of the wing or at the wheel, we're going to have our numbers normally to the right being positive. 
and to the left being negative. And I said normally here that like there's an exception. There's an exception to everything. The people who set these up a lot of times will have this in the maintenance manual. So in the front chapter of the maintenance manual, usually there will be dimensions and areas is the name of a chapter. A lot of manufacturers, so if I have a Cessna, I might have a chapter called dimensions and areas. If I look at this chapter, I see that they've numbered it exactly like I said. Started the, and for this situation, Cessna started at the firewall and went to the right. And those numbers were positive and everything to the left was negative. I've seen other manufacturers where they made the numbers to the right negative and to the left positive. Nice confusing, right? It's, it's just as clear as mud. Datums are established by manufacturers, numbering lines. If they don't, then we can do that. But my point here is, is just like people, it can get confusing. But at the end of the day, remember, it's just a measurement. It's just like using tape measures. So the datum is the zero line. The arm is the distance on that line. Moment. The moment is the product of the weight multiplied by the arm. Weight times arm equal moment. Now if you only remember one thing in weight and balance, remember this formula. Weight times arm equal moment. You're going to be using this formula over and over again. It's a very simple formula. Weight times arm equal moment. In this example that we have in the FAA 8083-30 chapter 4, they show a five pound radio located 80 inches from the datum. And so if you take five times 80, you get a answer of 400 inch pounds. That is an example of the moment. Center of gravity. When I talk about center of gravity, I'm really talking about balance. Let's say for instance, I have an airplane and I want to make it bounce. A toy airplane. I want to be able to take and bounce it from a single point. So to do that, I need to find this center of gravity. So here we're going to lay out our little stand and we're going to take our toy airplane and see if we can balance this toy airplane. I've got a post sticking up and we're going to merely place this airplane on the post and see if we can make it balance. Now that we found the balance point, that is what I am calling the center of gravity. The center of gravity of an aircraft is a point about which the nose heavy and tail heavy moments are exactly equal in magnitude. Let me say that definition again. It sounds real complicated. It was a lot simpler to say put an, put an airplane on there and see where it balances. Uh, but the center of gravity of an aircraft is a point about which the nose heavy and tail heavy moments are exactly equal in magnitude. So when we're doing center of gravity calculations and we're taking the weight times the arm equals the moment, we're going to mathematically find where this airplane balances. In real life I can't take this big heavy airplane and, and have a piece of wood with a nail on it and suspend it from a nail. Or I can't tape a string to the top of the wing and try to find where this thing hangs level. But I can calculate it mathematically. And we're going to use it by finding the moment. We're going to use it by finding weight times arm equals moment. 